Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week we're playing Nexon's Dungeon Fighter Online. Nexon, the maker of many great free-to-play games, and uh, I suppose I am being a bit facetious there with that comment, but I was actually pleasantly surprised by Dungeon Fighter Online. I guess my expectations were initially set pretty low. It's anime, it's 2D... Uh, didn't I kind of play this before when it was called Rusty Hearts and not really enjoy that? Well, I'm glad I kept an open mind and actually tried the game, because I have to say, after a few hours, maybe about five to six hours in the game, I am pleasantly surprised by what I have experienced. Dungeon Fighter Online is a very interesting mashup that uses the systems of an MMO. Things like questing, upgrading your gear and equipment through progression, grabbing new skills from the vendor, and going into dungeons with the gameplay mechanics of a 1990s multiplayer arcade beat-em-up. I'm talking about games like X-Men, Turtles in Time, maybe a little Simpsons action, throw in a little Double Dragon, maybe even some Golden Axe. Yes, this is the sort of gameplay that you should actually expect. In the grand tradition of those old-school beat-em-ups, there are several different classes you can select from when creating a character each with its own fairly unique gameplay style. There are nine characters overall, comprised of six classes. There's a male and female version of the fighter, the gunner, and the mage. I'm personally playing as a slayer, a guy with a sword in one hand and a demon in the other. Overall, I'd say the art style is very pleasing to the eye. Yes, gentlemen, there is a busty anime lady, and yes, weirdos, there is a really boyish-looking anime girl as well. So all of the perverted bases are covered. Now, the main issue with a game like this that has you selecting from a set number of very distinct characters is visual repetition. I saw a lot of this, a lot of this, in Rusty Hearts, and in the early going, you will see a ton of it in this game as well. But... That's where the monetization comes in. The vast majority of the monetization for this game seems to be devoted towards the cosmetic. Yes, there are boosters of all manner and special items, cosmetic pets, and etc. But most of the stuff that you can get seems to be unique visual customizations. You can customize everything down to a little animated emote that uh, floats above your head. So there's a lot of interesting customization options here. It seems less than predatory. It doesn't seem to be pay to win from what I can tell, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I've only had a chance to just briefly examine the pay model here. So once you actually get some of that visual customization going on, you will probably be happy with the uniqueness of your character. But until then, you're going to look like every other slayer, you're going to look like every other priest, you're going to look like every other busty female fighter. All right, all right, enough with the jibba-jabba, right? How's the gameplay? Well, if you like this sort of thing, that is to say, if you were a fan of Golden Axe or Turtles in Time or the X-Men arcade game, you will love the gameplay here. You enter into instanced dungeons. You can queue ahead of time, though I've had no actual luck queuing up with uh, the random queue system. I've never actually gotten a group using that system, but it could be playing during off hours. I'm not sure. Town seems very crowded, so it seems like there's plenty of people playing. Once you get into a dungeon, it is a series of screens that are filled with enemies. You will have quests of all different sorts, kill four of this, get six of this thing's toenails, kill this boss, whatever. You'll progress through the dungeons in a pretty controlled fashion. They do steadily increase the difficulty and variety of enemies, which I found to be a nice pace and a nice change of pace. So they move it along at sort of the right increment, introducing different mechanics as they go, and they keep things moving. So just as you're getting bored with fighting standard goblins with axes, they introduce goblins that can throw things. Just as you're getting bored playing goblins who throw rocks, all of a sudden they throw fire. Then you're fighting minotaurs. Then you're fighting weird little cat lion monkeys. It is a pretty good system overall. I will say I definitely see this getting old quickly. I'm not sure how high level play goes, but after about two or three hours of playing, I was pretty much done uh, for a quite substantial time. Not looking to really come back to this game every single day and play, but it was really, really great 
for what it was for the time that I was playing it. I could see myself playing maybe once or twice a week. It's a very sort of acquired taste, but if you're in your late 20s or early 30s, you grew up playing games like this, and that's the part of this that will appeal to you. The ability to unlock additional moves actually helps out, and you have a move but then you'll have a cancel version of that move. So it kind of helps to add to your actual repertoire. So I can use my upward strike or I can use the cancel upward strike to cancel out of a standard combo into my upward strike. So I can actually do a three hit combo and end with an upward strike once I get cancel upward strike. So it's a really, really cool kind of system that they have. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's everything that you would want to see and that I think this game needs. So as with any game, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows, right? There are negatives, and I've already talked about one, and that is the tendency for the game to feel repetitive. There are only so many dungeons you can go in and so many things they can do to diversify those dungeons before you've just been there and done that. And that's why many of these games were arcade games in the past, because someone was only going to spend a few dollars in the game, and you could reasonably beat the game in an hour or so of standing there with your buddies and actually playing and pumping in quarters. Number two will definitely be a familiar one. It is lack of good PC options. I know that is like the topic of the day every day, right? Darksiders 2 doesn't have good enough graphical options. Dark Souls is low res, locked at 30 frames per second. Yeah, I, I know. We hear it all the time, right? But in this case, this game just feels old. The resolutions are low, and ultimately the game can go full screen, but it can't do full screen res. So at 1080, I can go full screen and get the image stretched up and scaled up to that size, but I'm not actually getting the graphics presented to me at that uh, actual resolution. So what you're actually seeing on your screen is 800 by 600 scaled up, and uh, that ain't fun. I understand if that's the resolution the art is done at, and you can't really go past a certain threshold before it starts to degrade, but it just really kind of sucks that the resolution options are so limited and lack of controller support. There doesn't appear to be any native controller support for this. While the game plays adequately with a uh, keyboard, I really miss having a controller for these sorts of games. Ultimately, these are minor gripes. They're the sort of thing that you can get over if you actually enjoy the gameplay enough or if you have enough friends who are playing or if you just want to hang out in town and do your weird custom emote, whatever. The bottom line is that Dungeon Fighter Online is ultimately a game that is worth a look. It takes the grand tradition of the 1990s multiplayer beat-em-up and wraps it in an MMO and does so pretty well. Dungeon Fighter Online is currently available on Steam if you already have a Nexon ID from playing any of their other games like Combat Arms, you will be good to go. Check it out on Steam today. So now let's turn our eyes away from Dungeon Fighter Online to the rest of the world of gaming and Big Dave is cheap. So what's going on? What's going on? Well, PAX Prime is going on. That's what's going on. A lot of cool people there. A lot of cool things happening. The biggest announcement for me personally has definitely been that Runic announced Torchlight 2 will be releasing on September 20th, just in time to make that summer deadline that they set oh so long ago. Hopefully it's going to come out in a nice complete state, ready to go, and I can actually grab it and uh, burn up some time with that. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Longtime viewers of the channel will know that Torchlight 1 was one of my favorite games of the last couple of years. So any other good PAX news? We're only about a day in, so there's really not that much. Uh, apparently there's going to be another Metal Gear Solid game. I don't know. I stopped paying attention after the one where he ate snakes. The name of that one escapes me. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Can't remember it. So uh, anything else going on? Oh, Gotham City Imposters went free to play. I'm going to do a free to play Friday on that next week. The thing that I'll say is just don't overreact. If you already own the game, don't overreact. Download the game and look at it. Okay, download the free version and look at it. That's all I'll say. I was initially very skeptical, but it's as if the game's having a rebirth now. I actually got a game of Bounty Hunter to pop. I've never managed to get a game of Bounty Hunter to actually populate with more than three people on the PC version. On PlayStation, I play nothing but Bounty Hunter, but on PC, I have never played a game of Bounty Hunter, and I played two, and I'm really, really happy about that. So if you're a lover of this game, this is a time to love it again. 
I know it's a little iffy. I know your initial reaction is to be upset, uh, as mine was, but inform yourself, download the game, take a look at it, see what's changed, but also just look at the player population. It is so beautiful to actually be able to play this game whenever I want to. And this hopefully will bring a lot of people to what I consider an undiscovered gem of the first person shooter genre. All right, anything else before we go? Uh, Edmund McMillan released his Basement Collection on Steam earlier today. Go and check that out. It's a collection of his Flash games from his Newgrounds days. Early stuff, definitely worth a look. A lot of good stuff, extras there, sketchbooks, exclusive clips uh, from around the time of Indie Game the Movie, just a lot of really good stuff. Edmund McMillan, one of my favorite people. Tommy Reffin is, I don't want to leave him out. Uh, you know, those two guys, Team Meat, as they are uh, known together. Uh, just a couple of great great guys and uh, Tommy an, an NC boy who's making it uh, super proud of him and I, I just really think that uh, you should su you should support everything that these two men do and uh, I just really think that that Edmund has a great artistic talent and uh, you should go and buy his game 30% off if you own Meat Boy or Isaac so uh, check that out it's like $3.75 come on all right, on that note, we are going to get out of here, guys. Channel is growing slowly but surely. Thanks for sticking with me as I try to solidify a more regular video production schedule. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.